it right under you. Hey guys, we are live in Great Apes today. We're going to be talking everything orangutans. All you ever wanted to know, all you need to know about orangutans. So, what you're uh, looking at right now is Denda, our male orangutan, and he's getting a good look at what's going on behind the scenes. They're still setting up some enrichment for him. Uh, we're going to give it a moment here to get everybody in. You guys can all see us and hear us. Let us know you're here. We'll give you some shout outs. We love this first part of the morning here with you guys where we just get to see who all's tuning in and where you guys are from. That is always so much fun to, to see and to hear. So let us know that you're here, that we can and we can give you some shout outs. Let's see, hi Grayson, hi Carter and Curtis, hi Tabby, hi Ashton in Florida, very cool. Hi Grace, hi Jenny and the whole family, glad you guys are tuning in, the SEAL team. Hi Athena and Caden. Shelly, they are beautiful, orangutans are my favorite, so I'm super excited that we're here today too. Hi, Henry in North Ridgeville. Hi, Ginger in Michigan. Evan and Davin in Akron. Hi, Madison and Marissa. Hi, Mike. Hi, Kinley and Callie. Hey, Isaac. Good morning, Ava. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We are super excited to be here. Hi, JJ. Hi, Ashton, Gemma, and Amelia. We'll get to questions in just a moment, Ryan. We're gonna do a few more shout outs. Hi, Brindley. Hi, Tucker and Tanner. Thanks for tuning in. Hi, Rhett and Asher. Hi, Kane, Olivia and Phoenix. Thanks so much for joining us today, guys. Hi, Eileen. Oh, we love Denda too. And hi, Cicely and Sandusky. Oh, welcome in from Kalamazoo. Hi, Evan in Lambertville. Good morning, Mike. Thanks for tuning in. Hi, Thomas. All right. Let's get started here. Hi, Morgan, Sophia, and Bennett. Oh, happy birthday, Alexi and Logan. Glad you guys could join us on your birthday. That's exciting. And Roan. Hi, Seneca Park Zoo. Hmm? Sending love to Denda. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. That's awesome. Hey, Candace. Good morning, Matthew. Hi, Grace. Hi, Harmony and Felicity. All right, guys. So we are looking at Denda, our male orangutan, and we're going to get to know all about him and the rest of our orang family here momentarily. But we want to go through our morning announcements with you real quick. Remember, we are still doing Meals on the Go. Tuesdays and Thursdays, you can order online at ToledoZoo.org and pick them up curbside. This week's entrees are beef stew and hot turkey. Those entree choices will change next week, so be sure you check back and get your dinner orders in today by 2 o'clock. And next is our education department offering virtual classes. They're doing all kinds of different series now. They're talking about different animal groups. They're talking horticulture. They're going to start a training one. Check them all out. Go to ToledoZoo.org and check and click educational tools and you can see all of those. It's three dollars for members and five dollars for non-members. And of course tune in each day to us. 10.30 each morning we're doing Facebook lives each weekday and on the weekends we've got crafts, we've got story times, we've got so much fun stuff planned for you guys. Keep checking back in on things and as always we appreciate your support so very much. You guys have helped sustain us this far and we appreciate your support going forward. If you are able, there's a donate button on our live feed right now. We have a Facebook fundraiser going on and you can always go to ToledoZoo.org slash donate. All right, so we are here with Suzanne and she is our associate curator of mammals and she has worked in great apes for a long time. She has quite a relationship with all of our orangutans. So tell us about Denda, this guy we're seeing here. Denda's actually, he's 17, 
and I kind of call him kind of our man in residence. He was living at Seneca Park Zoo and they're in the middle of building a brand new exhibit. So he needed a place to hang out until they got that done. And luckily we had the space so we get to have him here. Um, we don't know how long we're gonna have him. We've had him for a couple years now while they're building and everyone's fallen in love with him. He grabbed everybody's heart right off the bat, not only just staff, but visitors and become uh, just enamored with him. He's an awesome guy. Um, what he's doing right now is he's just eating some of his regular diet. Um, we put it out. It's, he gets a lot of fruits and vegetables and greens. And then on top of it, then we're going to shift over and set up an enrichment device for him. If you happen to notice, um, Kim and I both are gloved up and masked. And when you see our keeper, Ann, um, she's the same way. These guys are susceptible to the same things that we are. Uh, so even before we had this whole coronavirus scare, this is the way our staff is every day anyway. We always wear gloves and masks. They're behind glass and they have great veterinary care and they were vaccinated and checked on a regular basis. So we're not really protecting ourselves from them. We're protecting them from us and what we might carry into the building. And then our staff on top of it have to be vaccinated and tested on a regular basis as well. So we're just following what normal protocols we already do when we're around them. Um, in a second, we'll step around the corner and we'll actually set up his device for him. Orangutans and all of the great apes are extraordinarily intelligent. So we like to do things to actually challenge them a little bit. They enjoy figuring out puzzles and games. They are constantly checking out their environment and what they can do different with it and around it. And so we try really hard to challenge them every day to not just, today we put the food out so you guys could see what he normally eats. We would normally hide it through here and make him go looking for it. But today he gets a break um, just so that you can see the different types of foods that he eats. It's never the same fruits and vegetables every day. We actually rotate it so that he gets a lot of variety. So on any given day, you might see different fruits in there or different vegetables, um, depending on what the commissary delivers us at the time. What but are we he, seeing today, Suzanne? Today I'm seeing beets and peppers, uh, grapefruit, some tomatoes in there, uh, romaine and leaf lettuce. And then on top of that, and there's always celery, carrots, and yam are, are just a staple in the diet. And then when we go around, you'll actually see we feed them their fruit separately because it's such a major treat. So we'll have to open up the container and see what he gets today. But on that, we can use it for training because they like it so much. We use it to get them to actually do other things. These guys participate in their healthcare with us. And so they can do a lot of different things as far as showing body parts. He'll open his mouth, he'll put his ear up, uh, put different body parts up for us to check. They're hand injectable where they'll put their shoulder up and actually let this, us give them a shot if we need to. So we use that fruit then to actually reward them for doing that kind of training with us. All right, so our first question here is from Trina and she wants to know how long does their hair get? It really depends on the individuals. He's got beautiful hair on him. The males end up with longer hair than the females. And his look like they're at least two to three feet long in the, the longest dreads there. And it, I have some that just don't seem to grow them as long. And then I have him and we had another male named JJ that used to have huge, long, long dreads on him. So, and what that does, everyone thinks when they look at him that he looks really soft. That hair is actually, if you've ever touched a horse's tail, it's coarse like that. And it's long like that so that when it rains, they come from a really humid environment, that water sheds right off of them and doesn't soak in. And so with the long hair, it can actually protect them that it just runs right past. And it also protects them from different things getting in through that hair. All right, well, let's take a couple other questions here as he's still eating. And I know this is one of your favorites to answer. Jack and Maddie would like to know if he has a tail. He does not. So hopefully you all know what that means if he does not have a tail. Um, that's one of the ways you can tell a monkey from an ape. So if it has a tail, it's actually a monkey. If it does not have a tail, then it's an ape. And so the orangutans, gorillas, chimpanzees, uh, gibbons, siamangs, all of those are apes. There. That was a great question. Thank you. That's one of my favorites to tell people. Absolutely. It's like we, you teeter yeah. up there. That was exactly. great. All right. Um, Karina asks, what's their normal routine here at the zoo? 
Well, we try to not have too normal of a routine because we want to mix it up for them so that it's not boring. But pretty much these guys um, sleep in about until the, the keepers roll in around eight o'clock. Um, some of them sleep later. And so we allow them to continue to sleep and we just work with the others first. Uh, we try to give them a lot of choices in their day. So right before he got here, he was actually outside playing in the sunshine before we did it. So we'll shift them out on the nice days. We move them around through the building so the keepers can go in and clean and set up. Um, they get fed at several points during the day. This is part of his diet. Later on, he actually, I think she gave me samples, so we'll show you. They get something called chow that helps uh, balance out their diet. They get, um, like I said, the fruit. He'll get another greens feed later. So we're always trying to mix things up so he's not getting the exact same thing every time at the same time. Very nice. And that leads right into Devin's question. How much food can they eat in a day? Oh. I don't know what the actual poundage is. Any idea over there? Um, <laughs> so we get, um, from commissary, we get about two five-gallon buckets full of our fruits and veggies. And we will process that uh, in the afternoon for the next morning. So we get whole fruits and whole veggies. Um, and then we'll cut that up into smaller portions and distribute it between our different groups. Um, so. I, like Suzanne said, I don't know poundages either. Um, commissary would know. So all those, those two five-gallon buckets are for six animals. We have six orangutans here. And plus tell us, plus um, a big box with about, I'm gonna say, twenty-six heads of let various kinds of lettuce and a couple bunches of kale. Yeah, and then they get enrichment on top of it, and then the chow, like we said, uh, along with that as well. And introduce everybody to our other orangutans. They're not, we're not going to be able to see them today. Today is all about Denda. This is yeah. his day to show off his skills with this puzzle box, which yeah. we're going to do in a couple minutes here. Yeah. But tell us who else we have here. So absolutely. In the other lobby, we have um, Baji and Leela, who are 15 and 16. And then around the corner in this lobby, we have the family, which is Boomer, who's 32 now. Do my math. Um, <laughs> So right, 31, 30, 31 going on 32, somewhere in there. Um, Yasmin, who's 41, and then their son, who is five now, Wakil, around the corner there. Very cool. And all right, Kennedy asks, are they nice? Do they like it when you're there? Orangutans are very mellow. They're laid back. So in general, they're really not aggressive. Um, so they do build a rapport with the staff, but at the same time, he weighs over 200 pounds and his strength is crazy. So we never have direct contact with them. Um, to Even just by resting their fingers on top of ours on bars, they could potentially break our fingers. So we're very careful about how we work with them and, and whether we have any direct contact. Um, you'll see when we're setting things up. There's actually skewers we use to hand them food and things like that. Um, and again, it's not that he would necessarily grab me, but even by accident, he could easily hurt me without meaning to. Sure. And that was that actually answered Tanya's question of how much he weighs, so over 200 pounds. Yeah. And then Morgan, Bennett, Sophia, and AJ have all asked, how long can they live? At zoos, the oldest ones I think are pushing late 40s going into 50s now. And what they found, we assumed that in the wild they don't live as long because it's so much harsher um, conditions. But a couple of researchers that have been there for a long time are seeing generational things where they are living that long in the wild too. If left alone and aren't you know threatened, they can actually live into 40s and 50s now. Wow, that's amazing. Jacob was wondering, can they learn sign language? They can. These guys can't do it quite as well as the others just because if you look at his hand, he's built to swing in trees. So his thumb sits way back on his hand and his fingers are really long. So they can't do some of the intricate sign language that we do. Um, they've taught them some of the basics though and just to see if they can do it. I think Chantek at Atlanta is the best example that he had a huge range of different things he could do and communicate back and forth with the, uh, the staff. Very cool. And Ashton would like to know, how do they bathe? They don't really have to bathe like we do. They do like to play in water. 
Um, but a lot of times you'll see them when you see them self-grooming or grooming each other and kind of going through the hair, that's how they keep themselves clean. Um, so they really don't have to bathe like we do. All Not right. to say that he doesn't love a good soapy bath. <laughs> he actually gets a kick out of, we fill a big tub with soapy water and he'll He'll get himself in there just to play in the water. I remember that's one of the things they told us when he first came here, yep. when he came from the Seneca Park Zoo, yep. who um, is watching us here today and checked in on him. Yep. Uh, when he came, they mentioned that was one of his favorite things, was he enjoys he enjoys a good bubble bath, y'all. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so. We're gonna head around the corner then. Yeah. Um, set up and I'm guessing as soon as he sees that he's going to get this enrichment device he's probably going to watch us do he's it. He's going to come so with us there's a good us chance too. he's going to follow yep. us. Yep, you guys have his attention already. So as I said he'll probably follow us. Corey's going to stay on Denda until he realizes what's going on over here. Um, I'm going to walk with Suzanne and Anne back here and we can kind of talk you through what you're going to see that you're not seeing quite yet though. So we are behind the scenes here um, and this is an area where the keepers work with the orangutans. And you'll guys, you guys will be able to see when Corey comes over this way that there's a door with um, caging uh, on it here, a little uh, hard mesh that they have attached a plexiglass box to that has different holes in it and it's called a puzzle box. Suzanne, talk to us about... The cool thing about this puzzle box is we can change it up. These guys are so smart that if you left something the same, they can clear an enrichment device really fast <laughs> um, because they learn how the pattern works. So what's cool about these is they're, each one is, is drilled a different way and we can mix them up and we can flip them different ways when we make it. So Anne's gonna put them in and then what he'll end up having to do is use a device to, uh, to move, it, move it through and drop down through the holes until it gets to the bottom, which has an opening that he can reach in, and then he can get the treat that way. And he loves it. This is one of his favorite toys, and so he's definitely watching to see her put it together. And this is part of their daily enrichment, which enrichment is a part of our animal welfare that we do first? here at the zoo. Ah, and... Okay. Every animal here gets some form of daily enrichment. Yeah. And um, Anne's showing off some of the things she's going to put in here. Uh, Suzanne, can you tell us what we're seeing? It looks like he's got sunflower seeds, some Cheerios, and some dried pasta today. Right. She's also got a box of raisins that she could put them in if she needs to. And what she does is she puts it along the top, and then he's going to have to push everything down and work it, it down in to where he can get to it. All right, so as Suzanne said, and just put in some sunflower seeds and some Cheerios. I bet you guys out there enjoy Cheerios just as much as Denda does. And now she's adding in some dried pasta. That's okay, That's you had some up time. And then what we do then is he has to have something in order to, um, I know we didn't give you anything to fish with. So what Ann did is she cut some bamboo. And if we give him that, then he can use that besides the fact that he likes to chew on the bamboo, but he can make this into a tool. You notice he's taking all the side pieces off so that he's actually made himself a tool that'll fit through the opening. And then he can, um, I'm gonna get out of your way so you can get a little closer. Um, and then you can see that he knows how to, to work through on it. Absolutely, and you guys, he's showing off his impressive size here. He just, in one swift movement, climbed up this door and has his hands up towards the top and his feet hanging on at the bottom and he's using his, he showed off his chompers there for us for a moment, his little pearly whites. And he's using that stick to work through the puzzle box and get out the treats that, that they placed in there for him. And the nice part is this is really consuming. He'll do some of this in front of us, but then he'll go back and make sure he gets it. You know, by the end of the day, he'll have cleared the entire thing. But he takes his time and he can keep coming and going, which is really nice. That is. All right, let's take a few more questions. Thomas says, don't they normally have an orange color to their hair? Um, it really depends on the individuals. It's kind of like if you looked at other redheads, some have a really dark auburn and some go all the way through to a really you know, bright, almost orange color. Um, the other thing is it also depends how much sun and light is hitting them. That, um, 
you'll see a lot more of the highlights when they're out in the sunshine. He's got kind of a darker coat on him. Um, the Bornean, he is a Bornean orangutan. He, um, they tend to be a little bit darker than the, the Sumatrans. All right, and Tony asks, what's your favorite part of your job? Oh, definitely, well, it's hard because it depends on the day too, but animals are definitely part of it. Getting to see when we've made a difference with these guys, you know, that, that he's happy and enjoying himself right now. Um, seeing the moms take care of the babies, you know, Yasmin and uh, Wakil have such a cool relationship, seeing that kind of thing, and the same thing with Makanzi with his mama in the gorilla group. Um, but at the same time, another favorite of mine is doing what we're doing right now and getting to talk to people and sharing our passion with them so that hopefully you'll have a passion for them as well. I can tell you guys from working here almost five years, the orangutans are my favorite. And talking to the keepers and the curators and everybody who works with them is what totally got me to fall in love with them. Joaquil was born just after I started yeah. working here and watching him grow up, it is my favorite thing is to just come over and see what he is getting into any yeah. given day. He is always doing something totally bizarre, totally entertaining, and he just has such a personality. They all do. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Wynn asks, would he be living solo out in the wild? Yes, yeah, so actually male orangutans do live by themselves. Um, and we used to think they were asocial and didn't like each other. And what we found is they do have territories, but when they, there's a good food source, if they happen across a female, they will travel with them for a while. And so they will congregate here and there and actually not um, have as many problems as we thought they would. In captivity, we kind of leave it up to them. Um, some of them enjoy being by themselves. Some enjoy being in groups. Uh, Boomer is probably our biggest one that he hates not being with his family that you know it, it bothers him not to be able to see them and protect them so with him we let him run in the group with Bonji sometimes we just let he and Leela choose to either sit together or not sit together um, and they'll choose to sit in different exhibits for the day but they come back together later um, Denda right now I don't have a partner for him and we didn't know how long we were going to have him but he actually seems to be thriving by himself right now that he's enjoying the keeper time and things like that as well. Very cool. And Cor, could you get a shot of just how big his feet are? Can you show us here? Because this is amazing mm -hmm. to me. Um, he is holding on with his toes, but his whole foot is definitely bigger than my head. How big would you say his feet are, Suzanne? Oh. So they can get a get an idea here. Okay. <laughs> there, there's Corey Probably showing off versus his 12 hand. 12 to 14 inches is my guess. Yeah. Um, Boomer's hand is... The palm of Boomer's it? hand, just the palm of Boomer's hand is the size of my entire hand. Yeah. Wow. These, and they're so impressive. They can be up to 17 inches from the base to the fingertip wow. on the hands. And the feet are basically just another hand. Evan asks, what games do they like to play? Um... It depends on the individual. They don't necessarily always play game games, um, but they, uh, his thing is he does something, and I don't think he'll do it right now because he's very happy at the moment. Um, he does something called Homeboy, or hug, what do we call it? Hugs. They were, in Seneca Park, they called it Bro, I think. Bro. But Tierra's been calling it Hugs. Yeah, he'll, he does a thing where he actually hugs himself and gets you to hug back. Oh. Um, and that's something he came with that um, we just encourage him because it's adorable. It's also, um, it's also a useful behavior for when we get him on a scale. Um, so a lot of problems when we try and weigh our animals is that they're going to, especially with our primates, they have fingers and toes that grip things. They're going to hold on to the mesh or the sides of things, and that's going to throw off our weight. We're not going to get an accurate weight, which is important for us to get a gauge on their health. So when we ask him to do a hug, when he's on a scale, then we're getting his hands away from the mesh and we're getting a more accurate weight. And we can actually, if you want, Anne, if you want to take some of the fruit, this is today's fruit allotment that she's going to pick up. Um, she can ask him to do a few behaviors just All right. to, uh, you want to come down and do it? Yeah, I thought you would. <laughs> he says fruit, absolutely. And if, Suzanne, if you'll just narrate this for us so that they can see what Anne's doing. So, and Again, in order to keep us safe so that we're not putting our fingers beyond the bar, so he's opening his mouth for her and gets a treat for that. Um, then we, we skewer it. You can show. There's the oh. legs. Yeah. 
Then that was showing you guys off his hugs. And what you're seeing though also is he really enjoys the interaction with the keeper at this time. Obviously he likes the yeah. food, but at the same time, these guys can walk away anytime they want good. and go do whatever. We never actually make them sit and work with us. We ask them if they'd like to train. Um, and they always do it. And they, you can go quite a few times um, working with them before you actually even have to give them the treat. They're pretty, they, they just like the time. And as she said, yeah, this is all done with positive right. reinforcement. Absolutely. So when they do the ass behavior, they get they get a high reward treat, exactly. right? If they're not doing it, then we usually just let them have a timeout and let them go do something else if they're not into it, um, or if they're getting frustrated with the behavior. Um, we just do timeouts or we just let them go do something else, and then we come back and ask them later. And so that's how we do hand injection right there. They put their shoulder up. Very cool. And Sienna and Serenity, I know everybody misses seeing our animals, and we hope this is one way that you guys can yeah. enjoy them until we're all able to be back together again. And actually, and one of the points is they miss you as well. <laughs> These guys really enjoy people watching and interacting with people at the glass, so it's, it's been hard on them too that they, when somebody comes to the lobby, it's a very big deal. They get all excited, and it's usually just a staff member moving through for something, but they, they miss you guys just as much as you miss them, so they're they're going to be happy when this is all over as well. And you guys just saw he was showing off his tongue, and you got to see his little pearly whites there. And with the tongue, what we do is we ask for that. One, it gives us a good chance to see if his mouth looks healthy. But the other thing is we have something called the pulse ox that we can clip on the tongue, and it'll give us their oxygen and their, their pulse. It's just one more tool in our, in our box. Lily wants to know, does he like broccoli? He does, actually. He does eat it. Um, obviously, the first thing these guys go for is all the, uh, the fun things, the sweets and the things like that. Um, and then from there, you know, they're going to go for everything else. By the end of the day, they've eaten everything. So he does like broccoli. It just might not be the first thing that he wants to eat. And did you guys notice he was just like us? When she gave him a piece of orange, he ate the, the inside and left the peel and just dropped it right down there um, in front of him. Yeah. That's very cool. Trenton, yes, you can see all of the orangutans when you come to the zoo. They each have different areas within great mm -hmm. apes. So as she said, Denda's by himself, and then we have the family, and then we have our couple. So yes, you can see them all when you come. Uh, Kenzie and Samuel want to know, do you have to brush his hair? Nope. Um, now and then we do pull their hair out and just play with it because it's fun when they uh, are leaning on the bars. But we really don't have to. We did have one that would get mats now and then and he would put his, his arm up and let us actually pull the hair out and clip the mats on it. But um, overall we really don't have to do anything for grooming. They, they do a great job. You can see how beautiful his hair coat is. Absolutely. And Andrew, age eight, wants to know how fast they can move through the trees. Much faster than you'd think. These guys always look like they're very slow and, and just methodical, but if they need to, they can swing extraordinarily fast. Um, their arm span, fingertip to fingertip, can be up to 10 feet. Um, so they can already reach a long way going up through the, the trees anyway. But they, uh, they're very adept. Um, they're much more graceful off the ground than on the ground. And Brinley asks, who is Denda's favorite zookeeper? Oh, whoever has the food that day, I think. <laughs> <laughs> What's nice is he does seem to get along with everybody. Um, we do have some little pick, pick and choose favorites, and he doesn't. From what I've seen, he's pretty happy with everybody. Uh, Are you gonna head back out and get something else? You thinking about it? Uh, oh, that's just gorillas moving, hon. You're fine. And let's see, we've, a, we've been asked, what is his all-time favorite snack? What does he get most excited about? Hmm. Banana? Mango? Mm -hmm. he, he, especially, he especially likes his fruits. Um, we have a lot of different scatter. I just brought a couple of the items out today. Um, we'll use different types of cereal sometimes, and uh, we'll get all kinds of um, low-sugar, low-calorie treats. Um, things with higher sugar and higher calories, we try and limit and make those special treats if we're trying to accomplish something different or new. Um, but uh, juice, he likes juice too. I brought some juice out. Um, but uh, 
Yeah, so I think fruit is what he really gets excited about. That's what he really loves to have every day is his fruit. Very nice. And can you recap for us how long they can live in the zoo and in the wild? They can live 40 to 50 years in both from what we've seen so far. And Kelly asks, how do they chew? Um, they have amazing teeth. I don't know if you guys got a good look when he opened his mouth up. They have huge teeth um, that they can crack hard. The fruits that they get in the wild aren't like the soft ones that we get. Um, so they have extraordinarily strong jaws to break open um, really tough outer opening tons. See if you can get him to open his mouth again. You can see some of those teeth in there. Um, amazing canines and, and really strong jaws. And as you can see, Anne is hand feeding him some juice here. And you guys can't hear it, but the slurp is so cute. <laughs> All right. Uh, Andrew, age five, would like to know, can he swim? They really don't swim. They wade. The problem with these guys is they're all muscle. So when they go into water, they sink. They don't float like we do. So it's actually fairly dangerous for them to go into anything too deep. So what you'll see them do is when they have to cross a stream or a river, if they can't go across a tree over it, then they'll hold on to branches and walk through and kind of test their footing. Um, they, they just don't swim. So if you notice, our pools here are fairly shallow, that they can sit on them and play on them, but they don't actually swim. And as we talked about earlier, he absolutely loves to play in the water, especially if there's bubbles. Oh yeah, <laughs> he loves the foam. And we're getting some questions about why we're wearing masks and gloves. Can you reiterate that for yeah, us? This is actually standard policy that we've always done with these guys. They're susceptible, susceptible to the same diseases that we are, so we could potentially bring something to him that he could catch a cold from us or you know, hepatitis or anything else. So um, that's one of the reasons why we keep our guys behind glass uh, so that they don't have contact with, with the public for that reason. And then what we were saying earlier is um, gloves and masks every day. We have foot baths that the keepers step in when they come and go from the areas. And then um, we're also tested on a regular basis for TB and vaccinated and things like that so that we're not bringing anything to him. And on top of it, we have a wonderful veterinary staff that stays current on all their vaccines and keeping them healthy. And we check them daily to make sure they look well and everything. But the gloves and masks are basically pr protecting him from anything we may carry in from outside. And you and I have talked about this before. They share, what, like 97% of DNA yeah, with us? These guys are 96 point something. Um, and then chimps are a little bit higher than that. Um, yeah, so they're extraordinarily close to us. And it's amazing. Uh, we'll bring in uh, human specialists for certain things. He has a heart doctor, um, pulmonologist, things like that. And they're always like, well, I'll try to help you. And then they come in and they're like, oh, this is exactly, you know, we, we can definitely do this. This is exactly like, you know, working on a human. So it's amazing how close and similar they are to us. It's just their solid muscle. I wish I had the kind of muscle mass that these guys <laughs> did. Um, I think we've all probably yeah. And obviously their, their arms are much longer. We were talking about how their hands are set up so that they can swing through the trees. That's the same reason why their arms are really long and their legs are short so that when they sink, swing through the trees, their legs don't get in the way. Sure. They're really just 100% built to be up in trees. And, and they are built for locomotion. They absolutely. are built to move. Yep. Um, and what you guys are seeing here, in case you're just joining us, is Denda, our male orangutan, is working on a puzzle box, which is a form of enrichment that we uh, provide for oh, him. Oh, moving the gorillas right now so he can hear the doors moving. So. And what it is is something. a plexiglass, box that has different layers put in it and then Anne put in dried pasta, Cheerios, and sunflower seeds and Denda uses a tool which in this case is his um, sticks of bamboo to move them down and each of the layers has holes in them so that then he can move things down and align with the holes that are on his side of the box and get those treats out. Yep. So it's mental stimulation, it's food reward, it is a way to keep him occupied, to, to test his brain and text, test his dexterity yep. so that we're providing you know, for our animals, 
from a holistic approach. We always want to not only just care for their internal health, exactly. but we want to care for their mental health, their emotional health, all of those things. And this is a great way to do that for him. Yeah. Um, Bennett asks, do orangutans make noise? Oh, they do. Um, most of it is fairly quiet. Um, they don't want to be found in the wild. So they do a lot of their communication fairly close up and personal where they, there's a series of grumbles and squeaks and things like that. But these guys, the males, I don't know if you were able to see it as he was moving around. Hopefully if he moves in the den later, you can see it or maybe when he's climbing here. The males have a huge air sac that hangs down that everyone thinks they have a double chin. <laughs> but that's actually hooked through to their lungs and they fill it with air. You might be able to get when he goes around, you might be able to see it. Um, he fills that with air and then makes this amazing booming noise um, that's called a long call that actually shakes the building when they do it. It's, it's an amazing noise. And in the wild, what they do is first thing in the morning, that's what the males do is they call. And it's just that way they mark their territory without really having to find each other and fight. They just, each one does this, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And the female listens, and if she wants to find a male, she'll move towards that sound. And they know the different males' calls, so they know who's calling and, and who it is. So first thing, I don't know that I've ever heard, I've heard him, a couple times. him do it as much. Um, what was interesting is we had never heard him call until Baji was in the same zone as him, and he could hear him calling, and then he started calling with him. And then since then, then he has done calling. Um, but Banshee and Boomer, if we're here early enough in the morning, we actually catch them doing their long calls in the morning. But the majority of the sounds are fairly quiet. And Trina asks, how long will it take him to finish this puzzle box? He'll work on it throughout the day. Okay. He'll work on it for a while, get what he wants, then he'll go back and eat something else that's free. That might be where he headed is back to his, his stash. Um, and then keep coming back and checking it and seeing if it's a, tomorrow morning when they come in it will be empty and gavin asks how tall do they get they're only about four and a half feet tall again they have those really short legs um it's the width with the arm span straight across that's really impressive on them yeah the hug everybody's talking about yeah. that hug oh, yeah we love the hug my goodness all right we're gonna walk back out here so we can see what he's what he's oh, yeah. up to. Um, Kara asked why, uh, when you were giving him fruit and doing the different training things, why were you poking? Um, oh. <laughs> so I, you probably couldn't hear it, um, but when I did touch him, I used the cue touch so that he was aware I was going to touch it, and that's part of the bridge for the behavior. Now, the bridge means that I'm acknowledging that he's done the behavior properly and he's going to receive a reward. So especially on behaviors where he can't, like with back, where he can't see what I'm doing by touching him, I'm acknowledging that I accept that he's done it correctly. Um, and then when he gave me his shoulder, I poked very hard to kind of simulate what it would be like if he were receiving an injection. So that's to kind of desensitize um, that behavior so that he knows when we do an injection, it's going to have a lot of pressure and it might be... Um, if there's a needle, it's going to hurt a little bit more, obviously, than if I just poke him with a stick. But um, so that's part of our training, so that he um, he's being touched, and we're acknowledging what he's doing in his training. And what kind of drink did you give him? Samuel asked us. Um, that was we just uh, get some of those like sugar-free, like Crystal Light kind of packets, um, so that we can just refill those every day. We do occasionally give them actual Gatorade or something extra special. Um, but we just kind of re reuse those bottles and we give them some uh, sugar-free juices every day to keep them, make sure that they're getting proper hydration. They do have access 24 hours a day to drinkers with um, clean, fresh water in them. Um, but we encourage them to drink this juice to make sure that they're getting proper hydration. Very cool. And, and then I have to throw one point out. We were talking about just some fun facts on them. A lot of people always say orangutan. Um, I even heard it on Sesame Street once, so it's, <laughs> it does happen. But the way you actually say it is orangutan. Um, orang means man, and utan is forest. So what their name means is, is old man of the forest. So it's orangutan. So there's an N on the end, not a G. So. All right.
Fun little fact that I love to throw out there. Yeah, and Rowan wants to know if they have any predators. They don't really. The only predator is man. Um, they do have tigers that live in their region, but again, they sit way up in a tree and the tigers are on the ground. Um, so most of what they're around is not a predator to them. Um, what's really wiping them right now, out right now, there's probably about 50 to 60,000 left. And that sounds fairly good, but you have to realize it's just on two islands in the entire world. Uh, they're from Sumatra and Borneo. Our entire collection is um, Bornean descendants. But what's wiping them out really fast is their habitat destruction. Um, they, the biggest threat right now is palm oil plantation, plantations, and I, I know if you've come out to the zoo, you've heard us talk about it and seen signs on it. And the best thing you can do, um, palm oil's in just about everything we use. It's really hard to go palm oil free. Uh, it's in your toothpaste, in your milk, in any processed foods. Um, so what we usually tell people is if you can buy local and do non-processed foods is the best case scenario and try to not use palm but if you do there's something called sustainable palm where they're actually not hurting the rainforest when they grow it they're taking crops and switching them over and things like that if you go to our concert our website and go to the conservation page there's a shopping list that you can download that actually is safe for orangutans that that can help us save them and it is very important because as she was saying palm oil is found in almost 50 percent of the items found on your grocery store shelf. Everything from makeup to snack foods to toothpaste and Soaps shampoo, and cereals, soap, yeah. everything. So yeah, check out about sustainable palm oil and do what you can. There's an easy app that the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo created that you can download on your phone and actually scan labels and see they have a rating system of how well that company does. So. That's very cool, guys. Check that out. That is how you can help orangutans. And Sawyer, age six, wants to know if orangutans are related to his favorite animal, gorillas. They are. Um, they're another type of great ape. Um, gorillas actually come from Africa. These guys are the um, only Asian great ape. Um, but they are classified in a, a similar family. They just uh, live in different spots, so they have different habitats and different looks. All right, and Mary asks, is Denda the orangutan who likes to push the button to splash water on visitors? <laughs> Someone got us once. Um, that would be Baji. That's his favorite thing in the world. Um, he's been doing that since he's two and he's 16 now? 15 now. Wow. Um, so yeah, so for 13 years plus, he's really enjoyed that button. And, and he plays it different every year. I, it's fun to watch his new game with it. That uh, last year his thing was to get people to run along the glass with him. And then once he would get them lined up in the right spot, his arm was long enough he could just reach over and, you know, and nail them. But he'd, he'd get them to stand in different places until they were right under the shower. Um, so much fun. But he also likes to psych people out where he pretends he's going to touch the button and then doesn't because he's still getting a reaction from them whether he does it or not. So. And as we've said, they have such great personalities, which makes them amazing animals to come visit at the zoo. As I've said, they are absolutely my favorite. I know yeah. Suzanne and Ann are partial, too. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you guys so much for joining us today. Uh, we're going to let Denda finish his diet, and we, as Suzanne has told us he'll go back to that puzzle box and he'll finish it by the end of the day. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Tune back in tomorrow each day at 1030. Each weekday at 1030 we'll bring you live at the zoo. See you guys tomorrow.